Today I just want to spend a little time publicly answering some of the most commonly asked questions I get about the subject of paper cartridges for cap and ball revolvers. I'm Dustin and you're watching Guns of the West. I get questions on a daily basis about cap and ball revolver paper cartridges because of the videos that I do on YouTube and because of the Guns of the West business that I run where I sell the paper cartridge kits, which of course you can find in the description down below. And I answer these questions as they come in with whether it's in YouTube comments or via email, but I thought it might be beneficial to take some of the most common ones, gather them all up here in one place and just do this video on them. And if I don't get to your question, make sure you leave a comment down below or send me an email at gunsofthewestllc at gmail.com and I'll get back to you. But let's dive right into the questions. Now this first one is one that I get all the time, and that is, can paper cartridges be made with round balls instead of conical bullets? And I think the main reason I get asked that is because conical bullets, especially the historical ones, can be hard to come by unless you're willing to cast your own. And I'm going to put some how-to videos down in the description below, some links to them on my channel, and or that already exist on my channel, there'll be links and on the casting of the bullets, and also how to use round balls instead of uh, conical bullets. Very easy to do, so the answer is a resounding yes. You absolutely can use round balls, but you may enjoy casting your own conicals too, so check the description below for all that information. This second question has to do with the ignition of the paper cartridge after it's been loaded into the gun. There's a common concern, it seems, that when a paper cartridge like this is loaded into the chamber of your revolver, that the spark from the percussion cap is not going to be able to get through the paper to ignite the powder. And so the question is, do I have to poke a hole in this paper before I load the cartridge so the spark can do that? The answer is no. These can be made with various papers. There's the papers that come in my kits. You can also use cigarette papers. You can use coffee filter papers. I've even heard of people using hair curling papers. But the spark of the percussion cap is very powerful and it will just blast right through that. So this just gets loaded right into the gun as is. No taking the time to poke holes in it and your spark will get right through it, no problem. This next question actually goes similarly along with that last one and that is, do I have to rip open the paper and then dump the powder into the chamber and then add the bullet? And the answer is no, not with a combustible cartridge. Although historically there were paper cartridges like that. For example, there are paper cartridges for the Walker revolver where it would contain the powder and the bullet and you would actually then, before loading it, tear the paper, pour in the powder and then add the bullet. But with the uh, combustible paper cartridges like we're talking about today, that all is just loaded in, like I said before, as is, the paper burns up. Sometimes you will have a little paper left over in there, but it's usually not enough uh, or even close to enough to affect the ignition of even the next uh, several cartridges after that. So just load the cartridge as is. This next question is, after shooting a full cylinder of paper cartridges in the revolver, is it necessary to then clean the cylinder before loading the next cartridges? And the answer is actually no, not any more so than when you shoot just loose powder and ball. As I said before, you may have a little bit of paper residue sometimes left in there. If it really starts to accumulate, there are ways to get around it. You can nitrate the paper and there is plenty of information out on that. Uh, it helps, but it doesn't necessarily cure the problem 100%. So I would say always plan on finding a little bit of paper down in the chamber. Uh, you, I sometimes use a toothpick to dig it out once it really accumulates. But no, you can just go ahead and load another cartridge right in. Although I would say it's a good idea to wait at least 30 seconds or so, which is always a good idea with black powder anyway, before you load your next cartridges to make sure there's none of that sm smoldering that could possibly ignite the next round as you put it into the gun. This next one is, does the cartridge need a lubricated felt wad between the powder and the bullet like we sometimes use when we're just loading loose powder and ball? The answer is no, and I actually would advise against doing that. When you're loading a paper cartridge, you're probably not loading it at the shooting range. You're probably making it at home to then take to the range, so the cartridge is going to sit for a period of time. You don't want that moistened, lubricated wad sitting in the cartridge, wetting the paper and weakening it, and possibly contaminating the powder. So I don't recommend wads at all inside the paper cartridge. As you've seen in my how-to videos on cartridges and videos on my kits, the powder is loaded in and the bullet is seated right on top of it. And this one, once again, goes right along with the one before it. 
After I load my cartridge into the chamber of my gun, do I need to add a bullet lube over the mouth of the chamber on top of it? Well, I'm gonna break this into a two-part question. Do you need to? No, not necessarily. Is it a good idea? I believe it is. I have shot paper cartridges just dry and it works, but just like shooting loose powder and ball, having a little lube over the chamber mouth goes a long way in keeping the fouling soft and maintaining accuracy over a period of time. So I do recommend it and I'll put a link in the description below to some good uh, black powder bullet lube as well. Now this is one that I actually have somewhat of a level of excitement about answering because it's also an announcement of some videos I have coming up. And that is, can I use black powder substitutes in paper cartridges instead of black powder? Absolutely, yes, you can. Uh, for a lot of people, black powder can be pretty hard to come by because of the hazmat fees. You know, as a lot of you know, it's an explosive rather than just propellant as far as how it's classified. So a lot of people can only get, you know, Pyrodex or 777 and substitutes like that. And I have some videos that I'm planning that'll be coming up uh, in the not too distant future where I'll demonstrate you know, making paper cartridges out of Pyrodex and 777. And with that 777, we'll really be seeing how powerful we can get the cartridges within the bounds of safety, of course. So yes, absolutely, you can use black powder substitutes in your paper cartridges. These next two questions go hand in hand, and it'll be a little repetitive because they touch on something that I've already talked about in some of the other questions. The first one is, do I have to nitrate the paper? And of course, as I said before, the reason for nitrating the paper is to help it burn more completely so that paper isn't left behind. But the answer is no, I actually never do, just because in the testing I've seen, it doesn't always get rid of all of it anyway, and so I still end up having to clean some paper out after I'm done shooting for the day. So no, you don't have to, although it is an option. And the other question, again, that goes right along with that is, does paper sometimes get left in the chamber? And as I said before, yes. But as I also said before, it's not as big a deal as people sometimes think it is. I usually will just load the next one right on top of it, just allowing that little bit of time, as I said before, in case anything is smoldering. So yes, but not too big of a deal. How delicate are paper cartridges? Well, obviously you can't throw them into a box and have them rattle around like you would with modern metallic cartridges, or you're gonna have paper tearing and powder spilling all over the place. But if you load them reasonably, you know, I usually load them into just a plastic ammunition container or a reloading container, and they seem to handle pretty well. You can even put a little bit of foam on top of them because they may be a little shorter than a modern caliber that would be of roughly the same diameter, and that'll keep them from bouncing around. But as long as you're reasonably delicate with them and, you know, transport them reasonably, carefully yeah they're sturdy enough to get to and from the range for sure do paper cartridges cause hang fires well first if you're not sure what a hang fire is this is where you pull the trigger your percussion cap detonates but it, there's a delay at least a perceptible delay in the time the spark is fired and the time the powder ignites and so the concern some people have is that the paper might slow that spark down even though as I said before it will get through the paper and therefore have a delay well, when the cartridge is made properly and with proper materials, and the kits that I have available down below in the description are proper materials, I've never noticed any perceptible delay at all. So I would say a hang fire is no more likely with a paper cartridge than it is with loose powder and ball. How long can a paper cartridge be stored? Uh, well, indefinitely, as long as it's kept dry. And like I said, don't put a lubricated wad in it because that can contaminate the powder over time and weaken the paper where it contacts the wad. But as long as you've just got dry powder, you've got a, a bullet on top of it and then your paper and that's it other than the glue, yeah, you can go ahead and load those up in a box. And I would say just like with modern ammunition, keep it away from extreme temperature variations and keep it good and dry and they will last indefinitely for you. And finally, are chain fires common with paper cartridges? Well, the good news is there's nothing about a paper cartridge that makes a chain fire any more likely than when you're shooting loose powder and ball. Just like when you're shooting loose powder and ball, my advice is always make sure you use a properly sized bullet or ball, which means that when you load it into the chamber, you'll see a nice ring of lead shaved off of it by the mouth of the chamber itself. That shows that the ball or bullet is slightly oversized and the chamber is therefore completely sealed so that no fire from the adjacent chamber gets in. Also, make sure that you're using caps that are sized properly for your nipples. They fit good and snugly without needing to pinch them. I've heard of a lot of people pinching down percussion caps to make them fit snugly, but while that you know, shrinks it in one direction, it expands it in the other and leaves it open for sparks to get in. So use proper size balls or bullets, use proper size caps on your nipples, and there's no reason to think a chain fire is any more likely than any other time. 
Well, I really hope this video has been helpful for you today, and I hope that some of these questions are the ones that have been on your mind so you can have answers to them. And like I said at the beginning, leave a comment down below or send me an email if I didn't get to your question. I'm always happy to help with this. And check out the description so you can see links to where to find Guns of the West products like paper cartridge kits, bullet lubes, and lots of other stuff on there. And while I'm here, I also want to give a shout out to my friend Richard who sent me this shirt. Make sure you check out his channel, Small Caliber Arms Review. Lots of fun videos and information on guns, new and old. I know we have a lot of the same viewers, but if you haven't seen his channel, be sure to go check it out. And don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos. And click the bell notification so you'll be notified of them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.